for watching. Thank you for joining us in Los Angeles, where I don't know if you heard, but just a couple hours up the road in Santa Barbara, a royal baby arrived on U.S. soil this weekend. It's Meghan Markle gave birth to a beautiful and healthy future Oprah interview. Harry and Meghan had a girl. Her name is Lilibet, as in I Lilibet. No one at Starbucks will ever be able to spell her name on the cup. <laughs> the baby's full name is Lilibet Diana Mountbatten Windsor. The only way that name could be more British is if they squeeze the words cucumber sandwich in. It's <laughs> Lilibet Diana Mountbatten Cucumber Sandwich Windsor Collywobbles. Uh, so <laughs> congratulations to the royal family. After all that went on, you think they'll send a gift? You think the queen is on Amazon right now trying to figure out how to ship a baby Bjorn to Santa Barbara? <laughs> Not only do we have a new royal baby, we have a new season of The Bachelorette. It was Bachelorette premiere night here on ABC. This season, the action happens in America's most romantic city, Albuquerque. That's right. It's, doesn't that sound lovely right now? Tonight, Katie got to meet all the guys. She said, I feel like being The Bachelorette means I can fall in love and start a family. <laughs> well, I feel like maybe Katie hasn't seen the show. So. I'll ask her later. Bachelorette Katie is here in studio. You know, my wife has been working very hard on her prediction for who Katie will pick. She's correctly chosen nine out of the last 12 winners on The Bachelor and Bachelorette, if you can call them winners. But, so she's... Her reputation is on the line. Tonight, we're going to run her pick by Katie. And if they're both on the same page, we don't have to watch the show this year. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> Think of all the time we could save. Also with us, you know, for uh, every week for the last few weeks, we've been inviting one person to sit in our studio audience. We still can't have a room full of people here, so we bring in one fully vaccinated audience member, and our FVAM tonight <laughs> is sitting right here. Please say hello <laughs> to Caitlin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> welcome, Caitlin. Thanks for coming. I heard you're a big fan of The Bachelor and Bachelorette and that kind of stuff. I, Jimmy, am truly obsessed. It's you are. like kind of almost embarrassing, but it, I'm here tonight, so it's clearly worth it to be obsessed with it because I'm sitting in this chair with Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, well, that's me. I'm not actually in the chair, but we're close enough, right? <laughs> And I heard you're a professional wrestler. Is that true? I am. Uh, it's surprising because I'm 5'1", but I'm feisty as hell. Can I say hell? Um, yes. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm with WOW Women of Wrestling. And, wow. Uh, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I could body slam you, Jimmy, if you want. Well, you, maybe later in the show that will be fun. OK. Um, <laughs> Have you, like, of all the bachelors and bachelorettes, whatever, if you could wrestle one of them, which would will you choose? Uh, I think I have to say Juan Pablo. Oh, Juan Pablo. He oh. sucks. Yeah, he's and the worst. Yeah. Once I throw him to the ground, I'm gonna say, it's not okay. Yeah. You know? I like that. You know? <laughs> it's not okay. <laughs> have you seen tonight's episode of The Bachelor? I have. At Yes, and I'm and very excited. You're excited. I'm, I'm obsessed. Yes, and actually, I have my top four, but I don't. I don't know. I can rival your wife, maybe. Oh well, it will be interesting to see you put, go I'm hand in hand. Yeah, saying, maybe I'm... you and my wife could wrestle. <laughs> that would be. Bring it. Bring it. That would be fun. <laughs> My wife is not a, a physically violent person. Like, when our four-year-old comes at her, she goes, ah! It's uh, like, yeah. Well, I, I look similar to a four-year-old, so. All right. Well, uh, you know, every time my wife picks one of these bachelors, I feel like she's picking a guy for herself. <laughs> it's, it's true. The, the new bachelorette, Katie, you may remember last season she was on The Bachelor. She presented Matt, the bachelor, with a sex toy on night one. And, and I guess it didn't work because he didn't pick her. But because she did something unusual, a lot of the guys who showed up to woo her did too. One of them arrived uh, gift wrapped in a box. One guy came in a Dodge Ram with a ball pit in the back. He had the whole bed of his truck filled with colored balls, like a trucky cheese or something like that. <laughs> Uh, another guy showed up in an RV and told her he lives in the RV. He did not get a rose. And uh, a suitor named Connor B dressed up as a cat because he heard Katie loves cats. And somehow this actually worked because these two made out like he was lapping up a bowl of milk. You're doing awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know. No, it's been fun.
I'm really hoping they don't get my whiskers on you. Oh my God, you got it over your Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> it's a good reminder. Don't forget to spay and neuter your pets, folks. <laughs> this was um, kind of weird because this is the first new season without Chris Harrison as the host, which I'm not sure the show is even legal without Chris in there. I don't know if it's binding, but a pair of former bachelorettes stepped into co-host. Tasha and Caitlin uh, helped the gang tonight, set an all-time record for most OMGs in a single evening of television. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. 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 We couldn't let you do this by yourself. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my you. gosh. Oh my god. Oh my god. Are you ready for this? Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh my god. So enjoy the. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. 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 Oh my, actually god. Drew oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Guess his name. Oh my god. Can you believe that? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, I got. I have some very bad news. God abandoned this show 15 seasons ago, so. Katie will be here a little later to join me in prayer. <laughs> Donald Trump is taking the old routine back on the road. Fibaracci did 90 minutes of mostly old material at the North Carolina State GOP convention in Greenville on Saturday, after which there was talk online that he may have suffered a wardrobe malfunction, specifically involving his pants, which some believed were on backwards. Wow, Mr. President, thank you so much. You know, and, and go back to 2016. <laughs> I was in a 17-way race and won this, won that primary and got here. I was a business guy that never run for office. Oh, it was. Some people thought they saw a fly there. Poor Mike Pence didn't know which end to kiss. It was very confusing. But then there was a detailed online investigation. And you know, usually if you got this close to Trump's crotch, he'd pay you $130,000. But <laughs> turns out it was just a revolting illusion that resulted in these hilarious headlines. No, Trump didn't wear his pants backwards at that North Carolina rally. Actually, Trump was not wearing his pants backward at a weekend rally. Trump successfully wore pants correctly at rally. Well, good, good, good for you. Imagine being the fact checker that gets that call. Hey, Steve, I know it's, uh, it's Saturday night, but can you check to see if uh, Ronald McDingbat has put his pants on backwards or not? Thanks. How's Sarah? Oh, so, oh very sorry to wake you guys up. Uh, but. Uh, Backward-seeming pants uh, seems to be a problem for Republican politicians in general. For instance, former Governor Chris Christie, um, uh, it looks like he's tried sneaking a meatloaf into the game. <laughs> Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell in a pair of uh, starched-up blue jeans. And this tradition goes back quite a long way. Here's Ronald Reagan in a pair of sweatpants only a Kanye could love. And of course, Rudy Giuliani just checking to make sure it's all still there. And digging through his under Rudy's. As for Trump, he hadn't spoken in front of a crowd since February, but when it comes to giving his base something to rally around, you'd never know it. He hasn't missed a beat. We're going to take back our country and we're going to take it back at a level that is very, very good. That's right. It's going to be the best good anyone has ever seen this level. Trump touched on a variety of subjects, including you'll never guess what. We're going to have a tremendous 2022, just like we did, frankly, 2020. Think of it. More votes than any sitting president in the history of the United States by far. We had a great election. Bad things happened, but we had a great election. <laughs> that should be the title of his book, Bad Things Happened. <laughs> And this is weird. Apparently, uh, in between golfing and conspiracy theory spreading, the former president has been watching our show and discussing it with the My Pillow Man. Lindell was recently on Jimmy Kimmel. It did not go well. Lindell told me Trump called him after that appearance to tell him how well he did. It's almost like Trump wishes he had been on Kimmel. Sad. <laughs> What's. 
What's sad about that? I think I might be offended. <laughs> but this was a shocker. Fox News didn't even show Trump's speech, which it's like if TBS passed on a new episode of Big Bang Theory. It's unheard of. <laughs> but Donald did catch up with his Fox friends in Greenville to weigh in on whether if he does decide to run, which he will, will he do it with Mike Pence? Yeah, I think I was disappointed on one account, but uh, that was a choice that Mike made. And uh, I want people to make their own decisions, and he did. And, uh, you know, Mike and I have a good relationship. We continue to have a good... But it's too early to be discussing running mates, certainly. Yes, yes. cellmates, maybe, but too early for running mates. <laughs> that little lady lump of a Trump, Marjorie Taylor Greene, is busy stirring her cauldron. Clan mom sent a letter to President Biden demanding that he answer a list of questions about COVID, including the following. Is there evidence that COVID-19 is a bioweapon? Who funded the Wuhan Institute of Virology Research of Coronaviruses? What role did the NIH, specifically Dr. Anthony Fauci, play? I guess she forgot this all happened when Trump was president, but you know, <laughs> we remain convinced that Dr. Fauci misled the American public regarding the origins, transmission, and mortality of the COVID-19 pandemic. We urge your administration to act to provide us with these answers by June 31st, 2021. <laughs> now... I can hear some of you liberal fact-checkers laughing, <laughs> saying, well, June only has 30 days. There is no June 31st, but that's what Big Calendar wants you to think. <laughs> you have to be open. Don't be a sheep, people. No two Marjorie Taylor Greene com comments make sense when you put them side by side. Her message is, on one side, it's, China created a virus that killed almost 600,000 Americans, and the other is, I refuse to wear a mask. <laughs> Vaccination rates are down across the country, so much so they say we may not hit the president's goal of having 70% of Americans at least partially vaccinated by the 4th of July. Not surprisingly, the least vaccinated states are Tennessee, Arkansas, Louisiana, Alabama, and Miss I feel like these guys are bad influences on each other. We might need to break them up, like they do in school with the disruptive kids when they... To encourage people to get their shots, officials in West Virginia are offering incentives like cash, guns, and trucks. It's like a showcase for the Price is White. And, <laughs> and the, the one reason for the, this anti-vax sentiment is you've got people like uh, pastor slash conspiracy theorist Rick Wiles spreading the gospel of misinformation. I'm going to survive a global genocide. The only good thing that will come out of this is a lot of stupid people will be killed off. Well, guess what? This week, Pastor Wiles was hospitalized with COVID-19, so I guess he was half right. He's believed to have infected 10 people, mostly his family and members of his staff. <laughs> they released a statement. He said, uh, this was a full frontal hit from hell on your True News family. Guillermo, this is a full frontal hit from hell on the True News family. What are you going to do about it? Well, nothing. I'm already... Maybe we should send soup. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Jeff Bezos is, um, as he, as he transforms into full supervillain, he's launching something new, and that something is himself. Next month, his space company, Blue Origin, is going to launch their first flight, and you know who's going along for the ride? Jeff himself will be in the ship. He will take the trip with his brother, Mark, who he surprised with an invitation. Mark Bezos looks like the actor you'd hire to play Jeff Bezos <laughs> in the Amazon Prime miniseries about. I know the real reason Jeff Bezos wants to go into space. It's so he can see everything he owns. <laughs> June, the month of June, if you don't know, is Pride Month. For those in the uh, LGBTQ plus community, this is a month for celebration. And for straight men like me, it's a month of reminding uh, that we are not in very good shape physically at all, but <laughs> this is a tricky month for major corporations because nowadays you can't separate your business from an event like Pride Month, and you have to make it a statement, which it has become obvious is easier for some companies than others. At Bass Pro Shops, we know that the great outdoors is a place we can all share, whether it be a camping trip with your kids or a fishing trip with your lover. It's time to hit the trail. This Pride Month, we're celebrating those who love the outdoors and members of the same sex. Hell, for all we know, there could be fish that are gay. I'm talking to you, Rainbow Trout. 
Whatever two consenting adults want to do in a 9 by 9 Coleman Sundome tent is their business. And if they only need one Marmot brand Sawtooth 15F down sleeping bag between them, that's okay with us. Bass Pro Shops. We're still trying to figure this whole thing out. Well, good for them. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel, and this is the internet. I made it myself. Hit subscribe if you like it.